Hello, everyone. My name is Giancarlo, and welcome to The Outspoken Artist. My guest this week is Jeff Jenkins. Jeff has not only served our nation in the armed forces, he is a talented photographer based out of Nashville, Tennessee, specializing in the creative portrait space. I'm extremely excited to have him on so we can chat, learn about his life, and I'm pretty darn certain we're going to learn a thing or two from him. With that, allow me to introduce Jeff Jenkins. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Thank you for that. Thank you. Of course, of course, of course. Got the title card in there for a second, but um, I appreciate you joining. Jeff, you're coming from, uh, what is it, 40 minutes away from Nashville. Is that right? Yep. Yep. We're, I'm about 40 minutes west of Nashville, out in, uh, Dixon County out here. Um, pretty open area. We got some land and it's uh, it's nice and peaceful. Nice. I, how long have you been there for? It's been a couple of years, right? Um, coming up on five years. Wow. We moved. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say like three years, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, time flies, man. You were, what part of Florida were you on before? You were Central um, Florida based. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm originally from Central Florida. Um, I grew up in Pearson, Volusia County, and was born in Halif- at Halifax Hospital in Daytona. And okay. uh, so I grew up right there in that whole area. And um, but we were we were living in Eustis, is about an hour north of Orlando. So that's where we were living at before. Nice, 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 nice. Question: What made you? Before we get into the photography stuff, what made you leave Florida? Um, we like seasons. <laughs> instead of it just being hot and hotter um you know we, we get the we get the fall leaves and the hoodie weather and a little bit of snow not too much um we get more ice than snow you know you get the freezing rain and then the whole road's covered in ice and it just makes it difficult to get around but it's it's peaceful up here and it's nice so you actually have seasons not just two which is yes. summer and uh it's spring <laughs> yeah. nice. well i don't know how many <clears throat> i don't know who's watching who's going to watch this but yeah. Jeff, you're you're a fantastic photographer. I came across you. you when I was within the cosplay conventions. Uh, heard about you and looked you up, and I'm like, damn, this guy's this guy's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you. back then, it's it's funny. I actually emulated your work in the beginning when I started doing mm. this. Before this, I did events, which I think you also do all kinds of different photography, like most photographers out there. Yeah. But I decided to play around with flashes and was looking at people near me and came across your work, things that you did with, I think it was like Liz Wonder, um, mm. Mass Mateo, things like that. You work with those folks and I'm like, damn it, how is he doing this? So I started, <laughs> I, I started YouTubing and eventually got my style. If you compare mine to yours, it's very similar. Um, mm-hmm. But what, I know you started later in life when it came to photography. Yeah. Um, it's something that 2016, 2016. Yeah. Um, what led you to photography? Well, we were living in, in Florida, in such a Florida at the time. And, um, and we had a photographer come out to take pictures of us at our house, my wife and I, and our, our dogs. And, um, you know, she came out and it was, you know, a couple hundred dollars for her to come out and shoot. And, um, cause we lived way out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, she came out, did the photos and then it was additional charges like after the fact, just before she even edited any photos. And I was like, you know what, this, we're so far out here and it's difficult to get someone out here. I'll just buy a camera and you know, we can do our own photos out here because it's, it started stacking up price wise. And I was like, you know what, for pictures of us and the dogs, I was like, you know what, I can just take the pictures ourselves if we just want to, you know, come outside in our house and, you know, take pictures. Um, so I, found a black Friday deal and went and picked up a kit camera. It was a Nikon D 3400, um, came with the two lenses and, uh, just went to work with it and messing around. And, you know, I shot on auto for, you know, quite a while. And then, uh, you know, I dove into YouTube and it was, uh, off to the races. So who, for, obviously, as you already told you, uh, you were <laughs> one of the folks that I started emulating, but when you were in YouTube, mm. Who were you, who got you to where you are today style wise? Because we usually are a compilation of the people that we look up to. So how did you get to where you are today, the style that you have? Um, well, it, I kind of bounced around a little bit. Um, and, and thank you for that. I mean, it, it's it's always so humbling and, and crazy to think that I inspired someone else to pursue a style. And it's, it's truly amazing to hear. So thank you for that. Um, so when I first jumped on YouTube, of course, I had a Nikon D3400. So I uh, immediately started looking first at that camera, you know, to figure out, you know, how, how to work the camera, the inner workings of the menu and how to, you know, manipulate certain things with that camera. So I came across uh, Frono's photo because he did a lot of Nikon at the time, started <clears throat> watching his videos. And that kind of led me on to Manny 
um can't recall the name manny ortiz yes yes okay. manny, manny ortiz i was getting mixed up with Randy, manny ramirez <laughs> so it's like um completely different people um but so i started watching manny and then i saw him kind of make this whole shift to sony in the mirrorless so i was like you know what hmm i'm not too invested in the nikon environment yet and um I was like, this might be the time to make that jump. But I was like, I, I need to justify spending more money in photography first. So <laughs> like, you know what? Let me let me learn to go manual first. And uh, let me do some shoots and learn editing and just mess around with it before I, I do any kind of jump to another camera body. And turns out, I mean, I, I did a couple of family portrait uh, sessions for some of the neighbors in our area. It turned out, I mean, they were they were happy with them. And um that just kind of grew and grew and I, I shot did a couple of other shots um i did a um maternity shoot um just kind of bounced around to different genres um this is well before cosplay which is, uh, you know kind of what i've known for but it's well before i even learned about cosplay photography but okay. uh <laughs> yeah so I, I bounced around with a bunch of youtube channels and um ended up peter mckinnon of course another one that's that is a, a big name out there Yes. And uh, that just led me down a line of, of a ton of other ones. But, you know, I've always kind of stuck with Peter McKinnon because I, I loved his idea of, you know, never standing still too long and just kind of always pushing to learn more and try different styles and try different things and just have fun with it. Yeah, no, Peter's, Peter's great. And you mentioned at that point you have to start a cosplay, if I remember and I read correctly. Mm -hmm. I think your first one was your first creative portrait was with Danny Christina. I think it was at a sugar... Yeah. Old Sugar Mill location in Kissimmee. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about <laughs> that that pivotal moment. Yeah, it was that was my first cosplay shoot. Um, it was immediately following my first convention I ever went to, which was um, the last time Star Wars Celebration was in Orlando. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So that was the that was the one and only convention, or the first convention I'd ever gone to. I, you know, I didn't even go to conventions before that. Um, but huge Star Wars fan, and uh, I saw it was in Orlando, and I was like, I got this camera. I'm gonna go ahead and check this out. So I walked around and I saw people cosplaying. I'm like, you know what? This is pretty awesome. You know, some of these cos cosplays are phenomenal. And um, I was I started looking on Instagram and came across hashtags, you know, Central Florida cosplayer or Florida cosplayer or Orlando cosplayer, and that kind of led me to Danny, who was cosplaying Wonder Woman at the time. So I just dropped a uh, message to her. I was like, Hey, would you be interested in shooting sometime? And, um, she said yes. And I had come across these sugar mill ruins in Kissimmee, St. Cloud area. And I was like, this would be a perfect location for this. It's kind of battle torn looking walls. Um, you know, it's, it's a little destroyed. And, um, I was like, let's, let's see how it goes. And there's also some like, um, tall grass fields. And I thought it'd be some cool shots with, you know, kind of, um, gladiator style with like wait like dragging your hand through the the high grass um but as wonder woman i thought it'd be a pretty cool shot so we went with it and it turned out fantastic i'm going to share here some of your work <laughs> yeah. think. all right we've talked a little bit but i want people to see exactly the the kind of work that you have recently and just overall fantastic fantastic uses of lighting um, thank you back then at the sugar mills um what were you what was your initial gear compared to what do you have now were you shooting with just one strobe or what were you experimenting with um back then it was a uh, single light um i think i was still using just a speed light i didn't have a uh, a, a larger strobe at the time so it was a what, tt 685 um from godox so it was just a speed light and a softbox and uh, i threw it up on a stand with a uh octagon and rolled with it um, it was a little difficult competing with the sun with a little speed light, but we made it work. <laughs> yeah. Trying to fight the sun in Florida is something, is something, this definitely yeah. something else. <laughs> yeah. um, this is something else. This is an artistic outlet for you because I believe yes. you also have a, another profession as well with mm. project management. Um, so what, what is photography for you? What, is it, what does it provide you? So, I mean, like, like yeah, as you said, and, you know, I've got a, I do have a career. Um, my main career is I'm a, engineering manager now for a construction company. We do uh, building automation systems for energy savings, air quality, and uh, sometimes some lighting controls. But um, photography is just kind of my creative outlet. It's, uh, you know, my ability to step away from kind of everything um, and focus on one thing. And that's just what's in front of my lens. 
And um, it's it's kind of therapeutic to kind of just step away and, and focus on art. I, I know I mentioned in the beginning in the intro that you served our nation, which mm -hmm. thank you for your service, by the way. Um, thank you. Much appreciated. You were in the Army initially in 2003. Um, mm -hmm. I believe a buddy of yours is the one that pulled you in. Yeah. Um, would you like to give a little recap of your time yeah. in the armed forces? Sure thing. Um, yeah, I was I was living in Central Florida at the time after at nine eleven, and um, you know nine eleven occurred, and my neighbor, um, who was former military, was telling us that he was going to go back in and uh, serve again because um, he he hadn't he reached the age where he couldn't go back in again, and um, you know I was I was kind of going nowhere. Um, I was actually working at I was working at Chili's as a cook at the time, and uh, it was basically just making money to party on the weekends. You know, it was just <laughs> paycheck to paycheck kind of thing. I was you know 21, 22. I was, actually, I was 20, and um, my buddy was going in, and he was like, "Do you want to go in on the uh, the buddy program?" And I was like, "Let's let's do it." You know, we went infantry, and uh, well, at maps when we were swearing in, you know, he. Uh, he wasn't aware that because he hadn't been out long enough, he didn't have to go back through basic. So he went straight to his duty station. I, on the other hand, had to go to basic without my buddy. And uh, so I went, went off to Sand Hill at Fort Benning, Georgia, went through basic training, AIT, and then airborne school, um, got injured in airborne school because I was going to pursue Ranger with a RIP contract after that. But um, airborne school getting injured, it was either recycle and start airborne school all over again or take my leave and go home and see family. So I decided at that point to go ahead and take my leave, go home and take needs of the army wherever they needed me. And I ended up getting orders for Fort Carson, Colorado. And um, so after my leave, um, I saw family, got back to the uh, Fort Benning and reported out to Fort Carson shortly after that. And um, they're a mechanized unit, which um, for those that aren't aware, you know, there's infantry and then there's mechanized infantry where mechanized infantry rides in Bradley's, which is an infantry fighting vehicle. A lot would call it a tank, but it's a, uh, it's, it's a mechanized uh, track vehicle with a uh, 25 millimeter cannon up top, and it, it contains infantrymen in the back. So, you know, you go into a situation, you drop the ramp, infantry comes out. So it's like a, a transport carrier, but it's also an assault vehicle. So being with the mechanized infantry unit, we loaded up all of our vehicles and uh, we got our orders to go to Iraq. So 2003, we uh, we deployed, you know, and spearheaded and crossed the border and from Kuwait into Iraq, and that was a crazy year. Yeah, that was in the very start of it. Yeah, yeah it was definitely uh, the wild west. It was crazy times. You know, we uh, there were times we were rationing to two bottles of water a day in a single MRE. You know, we only had what we had. There was no supply lines. There was no infrastructure set up. Um, we wore the same uniforms for you know, months on end, you know, crazy times. Do you find photography to be therapeutic? 100%, 100%. I, I tell other fellow veterans as well um, that I come across and I'm like, you know, they try and find an artistic outlet um, because it is kind of an anti-drug, you know, the, the VA of course, you know, likes to push pills on people um, as well as therapy and the, the therapy is always great. Um, but the, I don't feel like the drugs are necessarily always needed. I feel like a creative outlet is a solid, um, alternative to that. And, um, I mean, it's, it works great for me, you know, getting out and just focusing on photography. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, the, uh, the work shows, <laughs> <laughs> it definitely shows. And you've worked with some pretty popular names out yeah. there. Some may not recognize it if they're not in the, in the cosplay world, but I mean, Liz Wonder, Hannah Klein, Nashville Knight, which I believe is pretty much the Batman up in your area. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, or yes. Kelly. And, you know, I mentioned Mass Mateo as well. I mean, how, how did you, did they approach you or did you approach them? I know you mentioned that you, <laughs> with Danny Christina, you, you contacted them, but how, mm -hmm. how did you get around or how did you get a chance to work with these uh, cosplayers? So the, the majority of it nowadays is word of mouth. Um, and people that already follow me. But I mean, in the early days, it was just like you would do any business. It's cold calling. You know, you're sending, sending a DM, reaching out to people that are going to conventions the same as you that are in your area, you know, looking at, at hashtags for your area that's relevant to, you know, what you're looking for to, you know, people to shoot with. 
And then just reaching out and saying, you know, seeing who wants to be creative and get together and just create some content, you know, just have fun. Let's say, let's get some questions, right? Let's ask some yeah. questions about, let's say you're a brand new photographer and someone mm -hmm. comes up to you and asks you, look, I'm looking to get into this kind of photography, going to comp cosplay conventions. What would you, knowing what you know now, yeah. what advice would you give somebody if they're looking to start out with us? Um, I'd probably say, you know, attend a few conventions, you know, if you haven't already, um, get the feeling for how conventions go. You know, there's, there's some unwritten rules or some written rules and big signs, you know, cosplay is not consent. Um, you know, pay attention to people's boundaries. You know, if, if they're walking to go get something to eat or they're currently sitting down eating, you know, don't approach them for photos, you know, take, have a little bit of respect there. Um, but just, you know, get in there, experience the community. And I guarantee you'll walk away surprised. It's a fantastic community and there's a lot of great people in it. And I can honestly say that if I hadn't got into cosplay photography, you know, I'd be missing out on some great friends that I have today. So. No, you, you pointed on something that was critical, right? The concept of consent and whatnot. How would you, if you were to give advice to a cosplayer or anybody really within that community, when it comes to security or safety, um, how would you recommend a cosplayer find a photographer to work with? There's so many out there. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very diluted market, um, especially around, you know, the if you're looking at cosplay hashtags and you're kind of in that field already um and you got a lot of friends in cosplay you see a lot of cosplay photographers you see a lot of people's work right. um and there's new one pop popping up every day and there's a ton of you know photographers that go to conventions that don't really label themselves as cosplay photographers but they go to conventions to do haul shots and stuff like that um but i would say i mean if you're looking to find a photographer to work with you know look through some of your friends work look at you know work in your area find a couple of photographers and then kind of um, vet them, you know, reach out to people that they've worked with, kind of get a background and see how they felt the shoot went. Um, you know, comfort is 100% at the forefront of, of shoots, you know, feeling safe, being comfortable because it shows in photos. You know, if the, if the person you're working with isn't comfortable, I mean, you can tell in images right away. <laughs> it's very, it's very, very stiff posing. And mm. what would you say is a, a quick red flag if you're see a photographer out there. I mean, I've seen them. I've seen them out there when they're posting, looking for particular types of models. What are some of the red flags yeah. that you would say, scream out like, hey, I wouldn't do this if I were you? I mean, if, if you're working with them for the first time and they say that you can't bring someone with you, that's a massive red flag. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I always encourage is like, bring whoever you want. I don't care because I can get them to hold a light. <laughs> you know? that, that is that is true. That is true. <laughs> You know, I'll use them as an assistant. I don't care. Bring someone, you know, um, it just makes for a fun shoot and it, it makes them comfortable. Um, but I'd say that's probably the biggest red flag is if they say that you can't bring someone with you or, um, you know, these days you also want to make sure there's there's model release forms and, you know, some sort some semblance of professionalism. You know, you want to make sure and, and look for that. And that's pretty much the biggest things I would say, you know, pay no, no. attention to your surroundings at shoots. Um, cause there was the recently a photographer that got outed in California. Um, and it's, it, it hurts our industry. Big time. It does. It, it tarnishes it quite a bit because mm -hmm. I think most of us want to do it for the art of it. Others yes. do it for their own malintentions, unfortunately. <sighs> yes. And it's, it's a shame, um, because it does hurt our industry and I, there's, unfortunately there's no way to know until they do something. But, um, I just hope that, you know, if you, if you're in a session with a photographer and, you're feeling uncomfortable or if there's something you're not getting a good vibe on, you know, say something, bring it up, you know, don't just let other people go through the same pain. Yeah. It's, it's wild when people post, for example, the conversations and things like that, and you yeah. see how they're trying to do whatever it is that they're doing. And it's just, it's unfortunate. Um, it is. But when it comes to cosplay, we had a conversation before we yeah. talked about, and you mentioned that you like to label them creative portraits. Um, mm. What would you describe creative portrait photography in your mind? So it, in my mind, I, I think it's, you know, any, any photographer that uses and manipulates light to actually create something that they're aiming for. You know, if, if you've got a strobe, if you shoot natural light, but you know how to work with that light, if you've got a reflector, um, you know, any way that you can manipulate that light to create the actual image that you're looking for, instead of just capturing a moment in time in a hallway or, wherever 
I would say that's a creative portrait. Nice. Nice. No, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, I meant to ask you this question when we were talking yeah. earlier about the cosplay photography. If someone is looking, not everybody is outgoing. Some people are introverts, some are extroverts. Mm. How do you normally, you mentioned DMs, but how, how would you approach somebody at a convention to photograph them? And if somebody's just starting out, what do you think would be a good approach so they don't scare them, freak them out? <laughs> I mean, first, you know, approach them as you would like a, just a fan of the cosplay, you know, you know, compliment them on their cosplay, tell them that they look so good. They did such a good job. You know, if, like I said earlier, if they're sitting down eating, it's not a great time to approach them, you know, let them have their space and let them have their time to themselves. You know, they're, they're there doing their thing too and trying to have a good time with friends. Um, so if you respect that, they'll be more respectful if you approach them later on. Um, if they're just hanging out with friends and you see them taking photos and stuff like that, then that's probably a good time to maybe approach or walk up and compliment them on their cosplay and then ask them if they'd be willing to take a couple photos with you. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I think timing is everything. You pick the right time in anything really in this world. <laughs> if yeah. you're asking your boss for a day off and they're extremely ticked off, that's probably not the best time to 100%. say that you want to take a day off. So no, that makes, it makes complete sense. Gear wise. Um, mm. You started with a kit lens. I'm sure you have just one or two more things since then. <laughs> just, is, uh, just a few. <laughs> <laughs> after who knows how many dollars, what is in your mm. what is in your gear bag now, and what is the one thing that is odd but you never forget to bring with you on a convention? <laughs> so right now, I'm I'm still a Sony shooter. Um, I have an Alpha <laughs> Sony A7R four. Um, and um, I also have a Sony FX3 for video work. And with my go-to lenses is the 24 to 70 GM uh, 2.8. And then my Sony 85 millimeter. Um, I feel like the 85 is, that's what I started on doing portrait work. And the 85 just kills it. It's a beautiful Compression lens. wise and the, the bokeh. And the, I mean, it's just what you get out of that 85 millimeter is amazing. I wish the 24 to 70 was a 1.4, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be happy with a 2.8 <clears throat> and um, it's a solid lens because I can't always back up far enough. So that's where the 85 hurts me um, because whenever like in Orlando, um, the few times I've been down there and been lucky enough to been a, be a guest at MegaCon Orlando, the booth is 20 feet wide and with everything set up, I still can't quite get back far enough with the 85 to get everything in frame that I want to. So that 24 to 70 gives me that flexibility. Let's see something in my case that is weird that stands out, but I can't live without. Hmm. I might have to do a what's in my bag video sometime soon just to I'd be get others perspectives. <laughs> I'd, I'd be curious. I'd be curious to see what's in there. Um, yeah. So you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned Megacon. I think it's interesting yep. to bring that up because now you are, and you have been the feature photographer normally uh, hosted there. You take the red carpet photos, which I'm sure a lot of people appreciate because I mean, they're getting a heck of a photo from you. Are you, I know you're going to Dragon Con yes. in, about a, in about a week. Uh, we're, yes. <laughs> we're, whenever you're watching this, we're recording this the weekend before Dragon Con. So next week, Jeff is going to be traveling to Atlanta um, mm -hmm. to go to a week's worth of cosplay, which with that, before we even yeah. touch on the photos, let's tell me a little bit about Dragon Con. And I actually have Dragon Con, yeah. the website here, so we can talk while we're at it. But okay. Dragon Con, five days away, Jeff. I hope you're ready. Uh, oh, I'm hydrating. What is, what is Dragon Con <laughs> for those that are not familiar with this? So Dragon Con is one of the oldest conventions in the U.S. And it's also one of the largest. Um, and it's not your stereotypical convention that's held all inside of a single convention hall somewhere. It pretty much takes up the entire hotel district of Atlanta, downtown. Wow. Um, there's what, four or five host hotels and most of them are connected by sky bridges. So you can literally walk from one hotel through the other to the other. And it's just a gigantic convention for, I mean, it's almost 24 hours. There's some gaming events that don't start till 2 a.m. Um, it's wild. I don't participate in any of that stuff. I'm usually in bed. So come on, um, you're gonna do the parade? Come on, you got a parade. I, I, I never make it to the parade. One time I walked past it, and that was the one time I kind of looked at it and I was like, Huh, that's cool. But I had shoots. So I, I had to get over and get to my bookings. But there's always a ton of great guests at Dragon Con. Um, it's kind of a staple on the East Coast. 
in the cosplay community. Um, there's the the lobby of the Marriott Marquis, which has been in quite a few movies and shows. I believe it was in Loki, yeah, as well. I, re- I recognized it when I saw it. That's definitely yeah. Loki. Yeah, it, that's always a great lobby to go in and, and take photos of early in the morning before everyone's crawling out from the night before. So um, great time. I highly recommend it. Um, even if you don't go as a photographer, if you just go as a, a fan of, you know, fandoms, you know, of shows and movies, um, it's a great convention to attend. It looks like it. One day, hopefully I'll make it over there. I've been yes. hearing such great things about it. Um, it looks like it's just a lot of a lot of cosplay, a lot of a lot of great talent over there. 100%. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends of mine that are coming over from overseas. Um, Paper Moon Cosplay, you know, she's coming from Israel. Um, I shot with her last year at Dragon Con. She's a phenomenal artist. Um, just does amazing work. This is one of the photos that's been an all-time <laughs> favorite of yours, by the way. That was one of my first sessions. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I was that is... so lucky to get that shot. I... I, I Still to this day, I can't believe because that was just shot against a black curtain on the end of an aisle um, next to all the uh, convention guests. And I was I'm, I'm still so thankful that that Nick and Lexi were there and um, just they, they looked fantastic. When it comes to these locations, because you do two things, you make the convention floor, which as many photographers that do this know, convention lighting is probably the worst thing <laughs> for any photo out there. It does yes. not compliment anybody yet. No you have the ability to take it away. Um, I don't know if this is com- in the convention too, but it doesn't yep. look like you're in there. How are you accomplishing it? <laughs> so um, and that's actually at uh, C2E2 in front of the fountains downstairs. There's some water fountains and a large uh, water feature with some red lighting. And we just shot that against the railing downstairs. Um, but I, I mean, the, the way I accomplish it, I mean, that's, the middle of the day in Atlanta outside on the roof at the Hilton. It's just, it's high speed sync. And I blast the light and I crank up the shutter speed and it just blows everything out. <laughs> That's the trick. So I recommend whoever is interested in doing this, um, <laughs> learn, learn high speed sync. It's not as difficult as it sounds. It mm-hmm. will change your, your photography tenfold. 100%. 100%. I love all these city shots too. It's just, I love that shot. Um, that was shot here in Nashville uh, under one of the bridges. Um, my buddy there, uh, Southern Webhead, he came over here and we walked around downtown for a while, um, just taking some photos here and there. Wow. This is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Jeff, I have a question for you because I've seen this personally. Um, and I feel that there are some photographers out there that, it sounds ridiculous to say this, but somehow stake ownership on the... <laughs> on the models that they work with or get upset if you try to work with them. I'm not going to name mm-hmm. anybody, obviously, yeah. but it seems counterintuitive because it should be the model making these decisions. But how do you, what are your thoughts on this? What, what, how do you feel about a photographer saying that you can't be photographing someone for X reason? I mean, I would say it, like you said, it, it should be up to the cosplayer or the model to make that decision. Um, and working with other photographers kind of only brings out different artistic you know, product, you know, you get a wider variety of content because, you know, that one photographer that they're shooting with that stakes claim over them, you know, they only shoot a certain, a certain way, you know, they create a certain way and that's their style. Um, so, I mean, to do that, it's kind of actually also tarnishing the field, you know, it's because art is art, you know, it, it should be enjoyed by everyone. And I feel like they should work with, try and work with other photographers to, see what other content they can come out with. And, you know, they might like it more than the other. You never know. No, it's true. And I don't want to, most photographers and most people within conventions, like you said, you've made some really great friends um, oh, yeah. doing this. A lot of them are fantastic. Most of them are, at least mm-hmm. that's been my experience. Fortunately, there's just a few sour apples that either are doing something that is borderline illegal and other ones are just doing yeah. things that, you know, it's just not, they're not, they're not playing nice with the rest of us. Speaking now, I will I will say real quick that um, in the cosplay photography community, I found that it's much more inviting than any other photography genre because like wedding photography is so cutthroat because it's so diluted. You know, it's sure. it's packed. You know, if you go on any, you know, like here we have a Nashville photographers group. If someone posts in there looking for a wedding photographer within minutes, there's 47 comments with all these websites listed 
And it's just, how do you get it? How do you even get noticed in that? You know, it's so difficult. Everyone's looking to just step over someone else to get the business. And I get it that the wedding photography, that's where the money is because it's not in cosplay photography, you know, cosplay photography is it's for the art. So maybe that's what it is. It's just the, the money's taken out of the equation. And you know, the, I've got a ton of cosplay for tech photographer friends um, in this field and I cherish them. I mean, they're great. I can reach out to any, any one of you and, you know, and uh, ask a question. If something comes up, if I got a question about gear or, you know, Hey, how are you doing this? Or how are you accomplishing that? Or, you know, they wouldn't skip a beat, you know, and help out. No, that, that's true. I've had the same experience. And mm-hmm. funny enough, the last time we saw each other was earlier this year. We yeah. ran into each other at Imaging, which <laughs> Imaging is a convention and expo from the Professional Photographers of America, the fancy title. It's a good organization for photographers. Um, a lot of wedding photographers, a lot of event photographers. Yes. I, I feel that... Unfortunately, the cosplay photography is deemed as the lowest of the lowest, Mm. and I feel that they don't understand it. So what do you think are some misconceptions that some of these photographers in different genres don't understand in what goes into this creative type of portraits? Um, it's, It's if you Google cosplay photography, you know, of course, some of the first things you're going to see is, you know, the lewd side of cosplay. True you're going to see that first and foremost, and then you're going to see hallway shots at a convention. It's not, I don't think, I think the misconception is that there is a creative side of it. Um, And a lot of times I think that's missed. And there's also two branches, I think of cosplay photography, because you've got more of the composite artist, you know, that's adjusting and manipulating light so that they can later on composite that person into a background scene or take them somewhere else. Um, And then there's also the traditional, I would say, I guess, photographer, that's looking at the on location shots or like my style with like the, the blown out black background, more dramatic style, like the cinematic vibe. But cause I'm not good at Photoshop. <laughs> so Same here. I never, I never went down the composite road. Um, you know, I, I enjoy manipulating light and taking photos on location or in like a studio setting. And, um, but that's my thing. Um, there's amazing photographers out there that do composite work and hats off to them because I don't have, I can't do it. Yeah. You know, some, some really great work. <laughs> yes. I think Ryan, Ryan Sims is one of the ones that I like. Yes. I my, my, my beard bro up here in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't met him in person yet, but I've seen his work. I follow him on YouTube. Yeah. And if you guys haven't seen his work, Ryan Sims, fantastic yeah. photographer, fantastic artist, digital artist. So highly recommend you check out his work as well. No, he's an amazing person. And, and, you know, like we were talking about PPA and imaging, um, I feel like that's kind of what, where the misconception is, is, you know, by Googling cosplay photos or cosplay photography, that's kind of what you come across. You don't really see that creative side first. Mm -hmm. Uh, Outside of Dragon Con next week, which I believe you had bookings. I hope you booked out more than you needed to. What else do you have going on? Do you have any other events coming up? Do you have any other podcasts that you're being a part of? Um, there is a, there's another podcast, uh, side project they are coming up to dragon con. Uh, so I think we're going to do a little bit of an interview there at dragon con. Um, that'll be fun. A little, a little live content there at the Marriott Marquis. um, outside of dragon con, that's my last travel convention of the year. You know, anything left would be local, but I've got a couple of weddings to shoot, um, and a couple of other events, but that's about it for me for the year. And then looking towards, February next year back in Orlando. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to try to see if I can catch you. I'll probably catch you at Imaging, yeah. but definitely yes. try to see if I can make it to Megacon. If you're ever in town in October, Spooky Empire is something that I think yeah. you'll like. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun convention. It and is. I, and I, almost, I have been there. <laughs> I, I almost forgot. I literally almost forgot. I wanted to ask you about this one particular photo shoot you did. Very colorful <laughs> photo shoot. And, uh, so I was, Twinkie. Through, I, was, I was scrolling through your page and, you know, we all have that kind of like that moody type of dark mm-hmm. brand. And then out of nowhere, there's this very bright hair. <laughs> Tell me what is going on. How did Twinkie happen? And how yeah. was it like photographing a, a parrot? So um, Twinkie the parrot, um, his mommy or owner, uh, Lauren, um, they live here in Nashville area and she had been following me for a while 
and she liked my lighting style and the, the way I um, capture color and the, the vibrancy of it all and everything. So she had reached out to me a while back and, you know, I'm all for collaborating with uh, local people here and just creating content. So, um, you know, we, we got together and did a little shoot and I can tell you, I prefer shooting dogs over <laughs> parrots. Um, dogs can't fly away. But so it, but it was, it was a good time. Um, it took a while and Twinkie finally warmed up to me at the end and we were able to get some good shots. Um, that's one of the ones right towards the very end. The rest of the time we were kind of just standing around waiting for Twinkie to settle down a little bit and kind of get used to me. Yeah. Twinkie just got a shameless plug. Yes. Twinkie the parrot. It, it, just, <laughs> it, it stood out so much and then it disappeared. I was like, I, yeah. know, I, I know why it disappeared. It's just, <laughs> that's why I'm glad I caught it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking about it today. But yeah. Last question, or unless we come up with another one. Let's say we go back to 2016 mm. and you decide to skip on that awesome Black Friday deal. How, how different do you think your life would be today? I think I would have eventually still somewhat or somehow fallen into photography, but I'm not sure if things would have lined up the way they did, you know, to, to go to the conventions that I did. Um, I'm not sure if I would have even really gotten into cosplay photography um, if it wasn't just for the timing of certain things. Cause I'm, I mean, I've always enjoyed taking photos. I've always, you know, enjoyed taking photos of my phone. And I mean, even back when I was in grade school, you know, taking pictures with a little 35 millimeter film camera that I think I got for sending in proofs of purchase. <laughs> so the good old days. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I was taking pictures of, you know, Ninja Turtle action figures and they were all blurry and of course not worth a damn. Maybe one day I'll post some. <laughs> you should, you should. People will love that yeah. stuff. They definitely would. Yeah. They would. I think, like I said, I think eventually I still would have gotten into photography. It might've just been in a different method yeah photography again <laughs> she got her bone out <laughs> oh okay I was like, give me uh -oh. a second something broke no she came out here and got her bone and of course it's hardwood floors or the laminate everywhere so she likes to come out here and just drop it i'm surprised my, i'm surprised my dog hasn't done anything <laughs> um just yeah. curious jeff is there Anything that I could have asked you that I forgot to ask you that would be good to ask you? No, I mean, I, I am trying to stay relevant on YouTube as well. Um, so I'm trying to do the video thing. You know, it's difficult to do photography at conventions and do a ton of video content, but I'm yeah. trying to spread myself thin at conventions and actually get both um, because today's world, you know, is TikTok and Reels and everything's video driven in short form. But I still I still want to do the YouTube thing, too. So um, I do have a channel and that's why I've been also building my studio here in my my office at home so I can do recordings here at home. Um, I'd like to do, you know, teaching about light and gear reviews and, you know, just kind of tell people a little bit behind the curtain, you know, about how I approach things. And, you know, just a little bit about my style and, you know, how I got to where I am. And, you know, one tip is, you know, if you people are so afraid of learning off camera flash and probably one of the biggest tips I can tell you is just get a flash with a softbox, put something on a stool or, you know, something in the center of our room and move that light around the subject and just take pictures and adjust your settings. Amen. To and that. trust me, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Even you don't have to break the bank. You can get a no. cheap Godox young, no yep. lens. And even flash and, and accomplish it. Before I forget, Jeff, what yeah. is your YouTube channel? So it is Jeff Jenkins Photography okay. on YouTube. Um, so if you search that, you'll see that I've got a couple of videos on there. I've done some um, music video style videos from past conventions. Um, I've done some travel videos going down to Dragon Con last year. Um, so I need to get busy and start recording for upcoming Dragon Con this coming week. But uh, yeah, good times just trying to always produce content and it's with a full-time career on top of photography, social media, short form video, you know, it's, it gets hectic. It does. It does. It's, it's worth it at the end, but there is yeah. a lot of behind the scenes work that goes mm -hmm. along with it, but that's great. I, I've seen your photo work. I can't wait to see your video work, especially I know that 
looking into Peter McKinnon and some of these guys and seeing what they do. They're such great references. And I'm really, I'm excited. I'll make sure to put it on the video so people can go ahead and follow you and awesome. please, Thank please you. support him. Cause I, I learned a lot by emulating his work. And I think that's probably what most people should do, which is emulate the people that you, that you appreciate. Also give them the, you know, the, the just credit. It's important. Don't just steal somebody's work and yeah. make it, make it your own without giving them credit because it's the little things that matter at the end. That's right. Well, Jeff, I, re I really appreciate you joining me um, all the way from Nashville. I'm pretty certain that we're going to be coming across each other in imaging, like I mentioned. I'll probably interview yes. you then to see what you're up to in the next like, six months from now or so. Yeah, let's but, uh, go. I'm ready. <laughs> I, know, I know. It's going to be in Kentucky this time around, so I've never yes. been there before. Yep. And I've got. Um, I've actually been talking to a couple cosplayers about maybe coming to imaging so that okay. we can shoot them there. Like the other photographers have models on site. Right. So um, I'd like to, if we can set something up there and get some cosplayers on scene and we'll just cool. have fun with it. I have some, uh, I met some wonderful people there that I can mm -hmm. probably connect with that also follow. They don't necessarily follow it directly, but they are big fans of that okay. kind of work. So awesome. More to come, more to come. Yes. Yes. Well, yes. Jeff, stay tuned. <laughs> thank you for being one of my yeah. initial guests and if you haven't already, follow the channel, follow the podcast. Um, it's all over the place now. It's on TikTok, yeah. Instagram, YouTube. And yes. follow Jeff, Jeff Jenkins Photography, so you can keep up with what he's up to. Jeff, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man.